Hi, my name is Rick Dyer. I'm the safety manager at Partners in Development Foundation here in Hawaii. Today we're going to discuss a little bit about portable ladder and stair safety. Some do's, some don'ts, uh, safe behaviors, at-risk behaviors. Perhaps you'll learn a little something that will keep you safer in the workplace and at home. So get your pens out, take a couple notes, because there will be a quiz. Thank you. We're on. We're live. 43% of fatal falls in the last decade have involved a ladder. Among workers, approximately 20% of fall injuries involve ladders. Uh, according to 2011 statistics, there were 113 fatalities, over 15,000 injuries uh, involving more than one day away from work, and 34,000 injuries treated in ER. In a Bureau of Labor Statistics study of 1,400 ladder accidents that resulted in injuries, the following findings were made. 23% were in construction, 42% uh, of those injured were working on the ladder when the accident occurred, 66% of those injured had not been trained how to inspect ladders for defects before using them, 4% of the ladders involved in the accidents did not have uniformly spaced steps. 19% of the ladders involved in the accidents had one or more defects. 39% of the ladders involved in the accidents had not been extended three feet above the landing level. 53% uh, of the non-self-supporting ladders had not been secured or braced at the bottom. And 61% had not been secured at the top. 53% of the ladders involved in the accidents broke during use. On a yearly basis, OSHA estimated that as many as four fatalities, 5,360 impact injuries, and 1,900 sprain or strain injuries occur on stairways used in construction. And 65% of those injured in stairway accidents actually require medical attention. Don't be afraid to speak up. The life you save could be your friends. Don't let people take shortcuts. You wouldn't let your friend drive drunk. Don't let your friend misuse a ladder. Ladder safety tips. Read and follow directions on how to properly use a ladder. Avoid electrical hazards. Always inspect ladder prior to using it. Maintain three-point contact to avoid falling. Ladders must be free of slippery, uneven surfaces. Use the ladder for its designed purpose only. Chairs, boxes, and buckets are not ladders and should never be used as such. Now you're going to watch a fun little video. Maybe I should have got a ladder. That looks pretty good though. So, is that straight? Straight. Alright. How's it look? Anyway, how to not use a chair. And we'll try not to disturb the other workers in the office. Hustle, eh? <laughs> Alright, thanks. What? Don't hurt yourself. Nah, can't hurt steel. <laughs> okay, so a couple things wrong with this. Obviously, I had a chair instead of a ladder. And I was right in front of the door, and if someone were to come through the door, of course we keep our door locked, but some people don't. But if someone were to come through the door and knock me off the ladder or knock me off the chair, that would have been bad. Also, my ladder was not directly in front of my work. You notice I had to lean off to the side. 
to get to where I was putting up the exit sign. So make sure you're always lined up properly. If you're painting or something and or hanging Christmas lights, then just take the time to get down, move your ladder, and then get back up and do the do it the safe way. Okay? Alright. And no, I'm not hurt. That was kind of fun actually. Warning, the following video contains slightly graphic scenes that may make you cringe. They're graphic in the sense of like people falling down and stuff. There's no blood. Uh, the following video contains normal people doing stupid things. It might make you laugh. Uh, hopefully it'll make you think twice the next time you grab a ladder. Or choose not to grab a ladder. Uh, this next slide shows a variety of different types of ladders. Um, we've got some stationary stairs. We've got some portable uh, smaller ladders, step stools, step ladders. Several different types here. <clears throat> the main thing on any kind of a a ladder that opens an, uh, or an extension ladder is to make sure all the locks are the locks are properly engaged step ladders must be equipped with a metal spreading or locking device of sufficient size and strength to securely hold the front and back sec sections in an open position the spreader must have all sharp points covered or removed to protect the user Always inspect the ladder before using it. Ladders must be frequently inspected and those that have developed defects from use or misuse must be withdrawn from service for repair or destruction and tagged or marked as dangerous. Do not use. Avoid electrical hazards. Always look, especially if you're carrying an aluminum ladder, or a wet ladder, always look for overhead power lines before handling a ladder. Avoid using a metal ladder near the power lines or exposed energized electrical equipment. Portable ladders must have non-conductive side rails if they are used where the employee or the ladder could contact exposed energized parts. Non-conductive side rails is a ladder that has fiberglass or wood side rails. Three-point contact and balance. Always maintain three-point contact. That's two hands and a foot, or two feet and one hand, when you're climbing up or down the ladder. Keep your body near the middle of the step and always face the ladder when climbing. Never lean where your belt buckle or your midline could cross either the left or the right handrail. If you do, then you're too far off balance and your ladder can tip and you can fall. <clears throat> Take a moment to examine the picture here on this next slide. Um, notice the top of the ladder is extended more than a meter. It should be about three feet above the surface, the work surface. Um, notice right there on the right rung, or the right uh, rail rather, you'll see that it's tied off. And they've probably got an eye bolt into the, the eaves or something where they've secured the ladder up at the top. Uh, you always want to work between the rails or styles. Uh, remember to have three point contact, this person does. Uh, you don't ever want to carry tools up and down a ladder. And uh, the bottom of the ladder should be secured. Position the ladder properly. Fully open the step ladder on a level surface and lock its spreaders in place. 
Never open a stepladder folded up and leaning against the surface. Uh, use a ladder that is long enough. Never climb on the top two steps of a stepladder. If you see anyone on the top step or the top two steps and they're standing up there, ask them to get down. Tell them it's dangerous. Never place the stepladder on boxes or unstable bases to gain extra height. And use the ladder carefully. Maintain three-point contact. Uh, brace yourself with your free hand. Always face the stepladder uh, treads or rungs while using a stepladder. Never overreach. Don't lean to one side too far, like I said, not past the midline uh, while using a stepladder. Never carry heavy, bulky, or other objects that may make going up or down a ladder unsafe. Alright, this next uh, image shows the right way to do something and the wrong way to do something. Uh, just reading down through the list on the, the wrong way first, uh, there's an electrical hazard. You'll see the, the wire overhead. There's overhead hazard. It's the wrong height for the job. He's overreaching. There's no grip on the ladder. He's not hanging on to the ladder, in other words. Uh, he's carrying something that's really long, too long to be carrying up a ladder. Looks like it's about three or four feet long. Standing on the top three rungs. He's wearing slippers. Uh, on a ladder, you should really have shoes with a heel. And the reason you should have shoes with the heel is so if by some chance your, say this is my heel, if your, your foot slides forward, your heel can catch your foot and keep you from sliding all the way through the rung. Uh, so make sure you wear the, the right foot gear. Slippery steps. I don't know how they can tell it's slippery steps from this picture, but um, damage style and rung, non-slip foot missing. Okay, you'll notice on the bottom of the ladder uh, it has a little uh, rubber boot and that is missing on one side. It's on an unstable surface it looks like one is a 2x4 and the other one might be a 4x6 or something. So they're, they're not the same size, which one of them could roll out from underneath of the ladder. Uh, the base is too far from the wall. Uh, notice in the one on the, the left-hand side, the green one, the right way, the base is out uh, one foot for every four feet elevation. So a 1 to 4 ratio. Another way, an easy way to do that is to stand with your toes at the bottom of the ladder and reach out like this and you should be able to just grab the ladder rung that's right in front of you. If it's too far away, then your ladder is too steep. If it's too close, then your ladder is... You know what I mean. If it's too far away, your ladder is not steep enough. If it's too close, then your ladder is too steep. That's what I meant. All right, so the other one's uh, the right way. Uh, the right height for the job, he's not overreaching. Now, if he were going to be, you'll notice on this one that his ladder is not does not extend above. The reason his ladder doesn't extend above, actually, is because he would damage, he's not gonna go up on the roof, for one thing, and he would damage the gutter if, his ladder were leaning up against the gutter. So if you look at the third one down, it says standoff used. Ladder not resting on gutter because he's using something that's bracing up against the wall and holds the ladder and stabilizes the ladder. Keeps it off of the building. And yeah, like I say, since he's not going above, he's not going up on the roof, he doesn't need the ladder to go three feet above the work area. Uh, Flat shoes, okay, flat shoes is okay, but he should have a heel on those shoes. Um, it's not mandatory, but it's nice, even, even any kind of a heel. Um, 
All right, ladders overlap by at least three rungs. That's important on an extension ladder. Uh, on the other ladder, I missed it, but the ladders will overlap by only one rung. Uh, ladders undamaged. There's an adult at the foot of the ladder. That's actually the best you can do to tow your ladder if you can have someone down there. Uh, put their feet in front of the ladder and make sure it doesn't slide out away from the building. Two non-slip feet on the bottoms of the rails. Ladders at the correct angle and there's a firm and level base. Alright, next slide. Temporary portable and fixed stairs. Now, you go to the next slide, you'll see uh, looks like a golden retriever or something going down some stairs coming out of the back of a vehicle. Um, but Osha would say that uh, if you have four stairs or more, then you have to have a handrail on the unprotected side. So this one would need a handrail on both sides. Um, and like you can see on the other portable stairs, there is a handrail going up and down both sides. All right, fixed industrial stairs. Treads must be slip resistant with uniform rise height and tread width. Must be able to carry five times the expected load or a minimum of 1,000 pounds. And it must be a minimum width of 22 inches. Uh, you'll notice it's, there's a violation, the bottom step especially, but all of those steps are pretty messed up, but especially the bottom one is, is really messed up. Now the other two sets of stairs on the right hand side of the slide, those both look fine. Um, the one on the right on the top, it's a little steep, so you would want to be careful there, uh, but it's, it's fine as far as stairs go. Okay, next slide. Stairway parts must be free of dangerous projections, such as protruding nails. Slippery conditions on stairways must be corrected. Stairways with four or more risers must have rails installed along each unprotected side. Hmm, where have we heard that before? Uh, stair rails installed after March 15, 1991 must be not less than 36 inches in height. That's the stair rail. So that's the height from the stair up to the top of the rail. Now that's nominal, which means if it's 35 or 36 or 37, 38, it would be fine, but um, not 30, not 24, something like that, because any normal sized person could flip over the edge. All right. Uh, next slide. Ends of stair rail systems and handrails must be built to prevent dangerous projections. Sometimes at the bottom of the stairs or even at the top you'll see the handrail that might be just a, if it's just a wooden dowel, then that handrail pre presents a projection hazard where someone could come around a corner and it could stab into their leg. Sometimes I've even seen where they're sharp. You don't want that. Uh, I've seen where they had um, a dowel coming down this way and another short dowel coming off the side like this going into the wall but this little piece right here was removed and so down here at the bottom there were little screws or nails sticking out. So if anybody reached up and grabbed the handrail at the bottom, they could puncture their hand. So we need to, when we do our safety inspections, our monthly supervisor safety inspections, we need to go around and we need to make sure we look at stuff like that too. Um, handrails and top rails of the stair rail systems must be able to withstand without failure at least 200 pounds of weight applied within two inches of the top edge in any downward or outward direction at any point along the top edge. The way I usually check for this is when I'm doing my safety inspections because I don't carry a 200 pound weight and I don't weigh 200 pounds but I can grab it and I can slowly transfer my weight onto it. I weigh 180 pounds and I can kind of wiggle it a little bit and if it feels pretty secure, pretty firm, then I go ahead and give it a, a pass for that. If it feels loose, um, then I report it that it needs to be tightened and needs to be secured better. 
Uh, sometimes the rails will be cracked. You need to check for that. You need to check to make sure they don't have any uh, places where people can get slivers on them, like if it's made out of a 2x6 or a 2x4 or something like that. All that kind of stuff. All right, handrails must provide an adequate handhold for employees to grasp to prevent falls. Uh, another thing, another criteria, another um, parameter that it must comply with is that a handrail needs to be three inches from the wall. And again, that's nominal. So if it's two, two and a half, it's probably okay. If it's three and a half or four, it's probably okay. Um, if it's one inch, it's not okay. And what can happen is someone can get their hand stuck down behind it and fall and break their wrist or break their arm. So you always want to make sure that your eyes are on your feet and your hand is on the handrail. If you're a germaphobe and you don't want to run your hand down the handrail like that, at least cover it with your hand. If you do start to trip, you can catch yourself and not fall all the way down the stairs. Should you use the handrail on the way up the stairs? Yes, most definitely. A lot of people mis misinterpret how far the steps are and they trip going upstairs too. Most people trip at the bottom of the step of the stairs or at the top of the stairs. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to go down if you have a box. and that's kind of dangerous so what you want to do is move the box just a little bit off to the side so you can see one foot in between my arm and my body so now I can see my arm I can see my foot rather hit the stair I can see my other foot I can see this foot and I can just watch my feet as I go all the way down the stairs if for some for some reason I start to trip or the, the load slips, I can let go of the load and I can grab the handrail. If I have the box over here and I'm going like this, then I'm too far away from the handrail and the load is in between me and the handrail, I can't get to it. So this is how you want to go down if you have a big box that obscures your feet. Got it? Okay. There is another way you can go down the stairs, and that's to either hold it in one arm, if you can, and use the handrail, or maybe put it on your shoulder and use the handrail. And that's good if you have a handrail. Now, if the load's too heavy, or you're not used to carrying stuff on your shoulder, it's awkward like this, um, and you're just not comfortable, then you should probably get help. Okay, uh, OSHA 1910.24D talks about stair width. Uh, we mentioned this, stairs have to have a, a minimum width of 22 inches. Uh, 24F talks about stair treads. They have to be reasonably slip resistant uh, that doesn't mean they all have to have non-skid on them or be painted with sand or anything, but they have to be reasonably slip resistant. Uh, make sure you use three-point contact. I can't tell you that enough. Uh, stairway platforms have to have, they have to be a, a minimum of 30 inches deep. That's length of travel. And railings and handrails should be provided on all open sides of all exposed stairways and stair platforms. Handrails should be provided on at least one side of a closed stairways, preferably on the right side descending. Vertical clearance, uh, you have to have a minimum of seven feet above the bottom step 
and any floor above or any any uh, thing that's constructed, any structure above. All right. So you don't, because at the bottom step you're usually looking down, so they can step onto the, either a platform or the ground, and you don't want to be looking down and hit your head on something that's only five and a half feet clearance. So this is a uh, time that you would have discussion over any of the material that we've presented. Uh, if you have any questions, ask your supervisor or the presenter of the material today. Uh, if you're watching this video on YouTube, uh, feel free to give us a, one of these. And uh, if you have questions or want to make comments below, we're more than happy to take those and, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, otherwise, email us in the safety office and we'll do our best to answer your questions. All right, that's all we have. Thank you. So there you have it in a nutshell, portable ladder and stair safety. Of course, if you go to the OSHA.gov website, there's a lot more information there that you could pick up but we covered the basics uh, fairly well, I think. Uh, this presentation was uh, created mostly by Brandy Lolotai, uh, our safety assistant, and then uh, I put on a couple editing touches, perhaps. Um, we learned uh, different types of ladders and how to use them safely, uh, about stairs and how to go up and down the stairs safely. Uh, hopefully you've learned something that will keep you safer at home and in, in the workplace. Uh, go ahead and proceed to your email and you should find an, uh, the quiz there in Google Quiz um, for you to take. Uh, we're going to be transferring from internet to Google to take all of our quizzes from now on starting January 2017. And uh, go ahead and, if you want, hit uh, subscribe and like and I don't know what good that does but it makes me feel better <laughs> anyway <laughs> if you like this video give us a thumbs up and till next time be safe out there thanks bye <laughs>
<laughs> you and your little doctor's mask. Okay, right? Hi, my name is Rick Dyer, and I'm the. We're the bat, bat. What am I? I'm the. Yeah. Hi, my name is Rick Dyer, and I'm the safety manager for Partners in Development Foundation here in Hawaii. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about ladder, portable ladder. <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Portable oh, ladder and stair safety. Stair safety. Okay. Oh. Hi. My name is Rick Dyer, and today we're going to talk a little. No, well, I forgot to say what I am. Who I am? Okay. <laughs> and how much was my chair going back and forth? In the beginning, Dang. it was perfect, but it's just the chair was just, and then it stopped. Yeah. So it's is it? Like, it was still swaying. It was very distracting, or just a little bit distracting. Distracting. And how was that? Good. Oh, mucho that better. Okay, good. Corner. Play. There. We'll just put that there. Now, can you see it? Just a little bit. Now, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. All right. A thing or two, and you'll be able to use it in your. Ah, I gotta start. Over. <laughs> <laughs> and and don't forget to mention the quiz on Google. On Google. Google what? As What's Google, it called? Google Drive? Google Quiz. Google Quiz. Yeah. It's called it, Google Quiz? It's a Google Quiz. Okay, so it, for now, it'll be sent through the email. Okay. All right. Randy, this is really heavy. Can you give me a hand? Thanks. I do want to demonstrate one thing in the video. So we'll have to put that in the... Yeah. So, yeah. I forgot. Okay, anyway, um, maybe we can keep it. Uh, the quizzes. Uh, okay. Let's try this again. This, this video is going to be on YouTube for years. Okay. Uh, where you can take the quiz. Uh, some... Uh, no, that's all. <laughs> 